pure and radiant. He wields love to shrive clean the hearts of men. There is nothing more terrifying. What's going on, guys? Welcome to another video on the channel. Elden Ring DLC is coming out in June, and I am so freaking excited. I can't wait. And Elden Ring is one of those games where it was one of my most anticipated games in 2022, and now the DLC is one of my most anticipated things for 2024. I have so many hours in this game. I do a lot of challenge runs, a lot of casual runs, and then coming up to June, I'm going to be doing a full fresh playthrough for all the bosses and everything but today we're going to be talking about shadow of the Erd tree from software dropped about a three minute gameplay trailer they showed off a lot of lore a lot of gameplay mechanics so many different things and i just wanted to go over my top five things that i'm excited for when it comes to shadow of the Erd tree the first thing on my list that i'm excited for are the new weapons. Miyazaki has confirmed that there's eight new weapon categories coming to Shadow of the Earth Tree. And then we pretty much know what they are at this point. Firstly, we're getting the Odachi. This was a weapon that I kind of used in Neo 2. This is considered the great sword of the katanas. So it seems like it's gonna be a little bit slower, but it's gonna hit hard. It seems like it's gonna be the strength build for the katana side of things. The next weapon they showed off were the dueling shields, a new weapon type that looks like the twin blade, but with a shield inside of it. And it looks like you could use it either as a weapon or as a shield. So you could kind of have it in your, in your left hand and then have like an actual weapon on your right hand and then switch over to the two handed and kind of use it as a twin blade. It looks awesome. The third weapons that have been confirmed are the reverse hand swords. These swords look really, really cool. They're kind of held backwards where the curve is more towards the elbow, and they seem to have a really cool Ash of War tied to them. They seem like they're fast paced, kind of dodging to the side and hitting enemies in like the midsection. Very, very, very cool. The next weapons were throwing daggers. Now, Elden Ring has always had throwables in the game. They have daggers, they have kukris, they have a whole bunch of things. But now they seem to have their own category, something that you can equip. Like they're permanently equipped and they change the attacks to actual throws. I'm very interested to see how this plays out in the trailer. It looked like they could just throw daggers and it kind of has high stagger abilities. So I'm very, very intrigued. And the last one they confirmed were martial arts. This looks awesome. Pretty much turning your tarnished into a monk class. It seems like you could use your fists and your feet. It seems like the Ash of War are more connected to the feet portion and then the fists are more of just like the normal attacks. It looks very Sekiro style and it looks like there's going to be a lot of different kind of arts and stuff like that. I'm very, very excited. I'm hoping that these weapons can be found in the base game as well and not just in the DLC because I would love to do the entire game with these weapons. Like I would do an entire run through with the Odachi or an entire run through with just throwing daggers. I think that would be so much fun. Mother, wouldst thou truly lordship sanction anyone so bereft of life? The second big thing that I'm excited for when it comes to Shadow of the Earth Tree are the brand new bosses. The bread and butter of the Souls games right here. I can't wait to see what kind of bosses we're going to be fighting in Shadow of the Earth Tree. And Miyazaki has said there's 10 new bosses in the DLC, which kind of makes this release huge. I mean, usually the DLCs for From Software Games are really big, so this kind of confirms that this is going to be a very, very meaty expansion. There seems to be so many different kinds of bosses, like a fire giant type, which honestly looks really, really cool. It's like a full wicker perk, like a wicker giant, but I know fighting it, it's going to be annoying as hell. There's a tiger omen boss where the animations look crazy and it looks like two people are stacked together with hands and feet kind of grafted on as well. The animation for this fight looks insane. Then there's Mesmer, who is the focal point of the DLC. Looks like it's going to be like the levels of Melania kind of combat or kind of battle here. He looks badass and I can't wait to see how long it takes me to kill this guy because you guys already know Melania. Remember guys, Melania, she's the blade of Mikola. 
I don't think Mesmer is going to be the final boss of Shadow of the Earth Tree. I don't think From Software ever really shows off the final bosses when they show gameplay reveals or any kind of trailer for their game. So I don't think Mesmer is going to be that boss. We haven't seen the final boss, and I think Mesmer is going to be one of those like side bosses, optional bosses, that's going to be very, very, very hard, kind of like what Melania is. The third reason why I'm excited for Shadow of the Earth Tree is the story and the lore. The next best thing to the bosses for From Software games is the lore of the game, the story of the game, how interwoven all the characters are and how all the stories kind of bleed in with each other. I was so excited that they announced that it's going to be the story of Mikola because we really don't know very much about him. All we know is that he is go was supposed to meet Empyrean or at least is the brother of Melania. I can't wait for the environmental storytelling that's going to be happening in this DLC because there are just so many different places where it feels like we're going to go. I think we're finally going to get the story behind the Halligan Tree or at least something kind of what happened to the Halligan Tree and why Mikola did what he did and how he went about it because this story isn't done in the past or isn't showing the past or isn't showing the future. It's kind of a new land in the present. So I'm very, very excited how they're going to tell that story because we're going to be teleported over to this land, this land of shadow. And I wonder how it's going to be connecting it back into the lands between. Number four on my list are the new environments. And yes, even the swamps. Guys, we all know Miyazaki loves swamps. He's even told us that he loved making the swamp for the DLC. And it's really funny to hear that, but let's just embrace it. Let's 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 acknowledge it. And let's just think back and when we went to the Blight Town for the first time, the Lake of Rot, and just be like, yep, he we he meant to do this to us. But it looks like there's gonna be so many different diverse uh, collection of environments in the DLC. There's like a field of blue that as far as the eye can see, poison swamps like I was talking about, and even huge castles to explore. I'm excited for like the major dungeon, kind of like Stormville Castle, but like that big castle that's like all like on the cliff. That seems like it's gonna be a really, really in-depth place to go through. And also like the little catacomb kind of type things, cause I'm guessing they're gonna bring those back as well. I'm going to be exploring every nook and cranny of this world and knowing it's like a whole different land. I'm actually excited to see brand new things that are in the land of shadow that we don't see in the lands between. Come kind of new iconography, new kind of structures. I can't wait. The final thing that I'm excited for when it comes to the shadow of the earth tree is a little tidbit that Miyazaki hinted at in an interview, which is that there's a new leveling system that's coming in with the DLC. It looks like it's going to be more of the Sekiro style where you level up every time you kill a boss or you level up your attack power by taking down bosses in conjunction with the rune leveling system. But it seems like the attack power system is going to kind of take over and kind of give more flexibility to the player. I think the system will let players explore and easily experience the DLC, even if you're a high level. I think it's there to make it so players don't steamroll through the entire DLC. It seems like the attack power stat is more important while in the DLC, while you're in Shadows of the Earth Tree. I love this because in an open world game, you know that the more you the more you level, the more you explore, you kind of trivialize a lot of the bosses and you steamroll through them. I think this is supposed to combat that, and honestly. <laughs> Even if I had so many levels, the endgame boss of the Elden Ring were stupidly hard. I think after we get to Faramazula, the game gets so difficult that I feel like From Software really wanted people to use summons the entire time after that. Because some of those, that Malakath fight was something else. Even Horolu was something else. I am so excited for this DLC and I can't wait to experience it in June. We get new bosses, weapon categories, new environments, new story, a new leveling system. And there's so much more that I just didn't cover in this video. These are just top five of things. I could probably could have made a top 10 list. We also know how to get into the DLC now as well. The prerequisites are killing Radon and Moog with the entrance being in Moog's arena, touching Mikola's egg or at least the withered arm. I'm so, so excited to jump in here tell me what feature you guys are excited about the most when it comes to the shadow of the earth tree let me know if i missed anything that you guys are excited for i'm really really excited to see what you guys think let me know in the comments below 
Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you guys like this video, hit that like button. If you guys like the content on the channel, hit that sub button. It would really, really mean a lot to me. I stream over on twitch.tv slash beer in the hair about three days a week over there. We do a lot of challenge runs for a lot of Souls games, a lot of Elden Ring over there. Come on by. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.